this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to take the standard fans off of your radiator and replace them with Corsair IQ Link fans. The idea being here that you're going to be able to replace the fans in your system so that you can have uniform look throughout the case using the same Corsair fans in your case as on your radiator. So I'm going to show you how to do that, the logic for setting up the wiring and how to set it up in IQ later on. So I'm going to give you a load of different hints along the way. For this video, I'm using the Deepcool Mystique 360 ARGB all-in-one cooler, but the logic should be the same throughout with other coolers that you might want to use. So I'm going to show you the steps for this, but I'm going to point out some things of interest. As standard, for example, this Deep Cool cooler has two cables coming off of the fans, one for 5 RGB and one for the CPU fan header. That means that you plug those cables into the motherboard directly, with the fans connected to CPU fan header, meaning that the speed of them is then controlled by the motherboard. This logic will be slightly different once we get to using the Corsair fans on the radiator, but I want to explore it with you so it's clear, because it will present some problems that are worth noting. The pump itself has a separate cable that connects to the AIO pump header on the motherboard that you can see here. You might want to change that cable to the CPU fan header, and I'll show you why later on. But the logic here is both the fans on the radiator and the pump are both controlled by the motherboard and set up pretty nicely so that everything is controlled really easily there. It's fairly straightforward and we're going to make it a little bit more complicated, but don't worry, by the end it'll be perfectly clear how to set it up for you. So first of all, we're going to remove the standard fans from the radiator and make sure you hang on to the screws. Don't worry if the radiator is not got fans on it these are just included with your radiator for example when you're meant to put them on just don't put them on take those screws and we're going to use those with the corsair iq link fans instead you will want to make a note of where the connectors are on the fans before you put them onto the radiator and the position of them and how you're going to wire them up in the case this is going to be particularly important depending on the logic of how you're doing it so i've not screwed the fans on just yet because what I'm doing here is I'm going to run a cable from the side mounted intake fans that you can see here to the fans on the radiator. So it's a short cable. So you want to make sure there's enough length in that cable to run from those side fans onto the fans on the radiator so that we can daisy chain things together. The thing I've found here is that I've obviously got the connector on the wrong edge. It's close to the front of the case, making it pretty hard to plug in. If you flip the fans over so that connector is closer to the back, that means the cable has less distance to run and it's theoretically easier to connect at that end, meaning that it's easy to connect these things up. It's worth thinking about this logic before you go about the installation process because you don't want to find that you've screwed all your fans in and then you can't plug the cable in because it's proving a little bit tricky. With that in mind, we can just use the radiator screws that came with the all-in-one cooler to screw the fans into the radiator. Obviously make sure they're facing the same way. In this instance, I'm putting them facing towards me in terms of the fan blades because they're going to exhaust through the radiator and out of the top of the case. If you wanted to intake, instead you'd flip the fans over so they were face down and they'd be pulling air through if you side mounted, for example. And I've got a separate video on which is the best position for your all-in-one cooler, but in this case, I'm setting it up like that. Now I'm trying to plug this cable in and I've found that the tubes on the radiator are actually in the way of plugging the cable in so the iq link cable now won't plug in so this is another problem to watch out for what i had to do here was remove the fans to be able to lift them up slightly so i could plug the cable in without that tube getting in the way and then put it back again this issue is going to vary from radiator to radiator depending on the thickness of the tubes but it's something it is worth pointing out. You might not have this problem. Perhaps your all-in-one cooler will be fine with it. Perhaps there won't be a problem here, but you can see if I remove the fan, it was easy enough to plug in, but even now it's proving a problem to push that back into place because the cable is just too close to the tubes. And so you have to adjust the positioning of it. What I realized is if I remove the second fan in the lineup, then I would be able to adjust it sufficiently to be able to put that first fan back on, position it down, screw it in, and set it up. So it is possible to do in this instance, which is just a little bit fiddly. If I'd planned this out beforehand and plugged that IQ link cable in before trying to seat the fans on the radiator, it might not have been a problem. It's just something to think about while you're going through the setup process. And when you're doing this, make sure your cables are plugged in, you understand the logic of where the cables are going to connect up, and that you've got enough room to do it in the case as well that you can manipulate these cables around 
it's pretty tricky otherwise. So you can see now that's fitting, not a problem. And it shouldn't be an issue connecting the fans on the radiator to the fans on the case. At the other end, that connector is also available, which will also be important in a minute. So what we're going to do is run these fans into other fans, into other fans, into other fans, and then into the controller. And I'll show you how that's going to work in a minute. But now we're positioning the radiator at the top of the case and then screwing it in at the top as it was before with a standard sort of logic, installing it at the top there pretty easily and just using the small screws that were included with the radiator to secure it to the case or to a tray if you happen to have a removable fan tray for example and this is going to vary from build to build but the logic is pretty much the same across all all-in-one coolers now with these corsair fans that i'm using you'll notice it's got corsair written on it you can actually take those clips off and flip them over because they're the wrong way around as standards so they're upside down that's not a problem we can adjust that now i'm also putting a rear fan on here as well the reason i'm showing you this is because what i want to do here is to run another short cable off the end of the fans that are on the radiator to that rear exhaust fan so we can plug that fan in and this then carries on the chain of connections in the case to basically run that RGB to that. And that's the joy of the IQ Link system and how it works. It's really easy to connect up fans into the system. And I've got 10 fans in this system that are all going to be connected up with one single cable to the controller, as I'll show you in a second, which makes life really easy. So here, the exhaust fan on the left is the first connection. Then all three fans on the radiator connect to these intake fans on the side that then connect to the intake fans on the bottom. And then finally, the cable from that which is this long cable, runs through to the rear and plugs into the controller. That means that all the fans that you can see are running off this one cable after being daisy-chained together and then run that cable through to the rear to connect them up. It's a pretty straightforward way of doing it. makes life easier rather than having to run multiple cables to the back, and that's one of the joys of this controller, which can take two things. So you can see you can plug in two lots on either side. Now, it used to be that you could only plug in seven devices into one port. Now you can plug in 12 on either side to a maximum of 24. You do have some other connectors to think about as well, though. So there's this power connector that plugs in here, which is an adapter to then connect up to a PCIe power cable from your power supply unit. And then you have a USB connection as well. That's important. That needs to plug into the motherboard to make sure that you can control the whole system via Corsair's IQ software. So those two things are very important. With a Corsair cooler, you'd also get a CPU cable which plugs in the right-hand side of this tiny port. You likely won't have this if you've only bought the fans, but you can buy it separately, and that would connect up to the motherboard so the motherboard would recognize that a CPU fan was plugged in. And that's one thing that can be useful if you want to avoid the CPU fan speed errors that I'm going to show you a little later on. But do remember that you do need a PCIe power cable from your power supply unit. So you need a spare cable as a similar one to the ones you'd use for your graphics card. You need the six pin part of this to plug in to that special adapter that comes out of the controller in order to be able to power all these fans in the system. Pretty straightforward, but you need to make sure you've got a spare one of those. And then the USB connection plugs in the bottom middle of the motherboard. And those two things are essential. You'll find it basically on the right hand side or in the middle of the bottom of the motherboard and plug it in down there and that'll ensure that IQ can detect everything you've plugged into it and you can control it all and update the firmware where necessary. So in this system that I built I've only got one cable plugged into the controller and then obviously as I've shown you those additional cables that need to be plugged in as well. So this is what that looks like here. Once again just connecting those up and making sure the whole system is wired in properly it's pretty straightforward, as you can see, to be able to basically swap out the fans in your system and replace them with Corsair's IQ Link fans and to put them on the all-in-one cooler really easily as well. The logic is pretty straightforward with the one caveat, as I mentioned, that there's no CPU fan header connection now because we've taken those off the deep cool cooler that originally went on there and plugged it into the CPU fan header. So the motherboard might not like that, and I'll show you why that's a problem in a second. But as long as you've got all the other connections in place, it shouldn't be an issue. So we've now sorted that out, and you can see that when I turn the system on, not all the fans are lighting up. And also, in the BIOS, when you start to boot your system, you'll see it says CPU fan speed detection error. So there's two problems there, and I'll show you how to sort out both of them. First of all, you go into the BIOS, 
And what you want to do is look for the advanced mode. So you can see down here, we click on some advanced mode. And then I'm looking for the monitors section. And then I'm looking for the basically the CPU fan speed. You want to find that fan speed setting in your BIOS and set it to ignore. You know there's fans on the cooler and that they're spinning and that the pump's plugged into the AIO pump header. So you can set this to ignore to tell the BIOS not to worry about it anymore. Or you plug your pump into the CPU fan header as an alternative. Next step is to run IQ. Chances are you might find, if this is the first time setting up your system, that the IQ Link system hub requires a firmware update. And that's why the fans weren't lit up earlier on. You'll need to run this firmware update so that the ports have enough power to be able to control all the things that we plugged into it. As mentioned, you can plug 12 things into either side now for a maximum of 24. And because I've got 10 plugged into it, it originally wasn't working with 10, it would only work with 7, so it was a bit confused. But you can see once you update the firmware, now the RGB lighting and fan power is working across all those devices without problem. Next up, we want to go to the lighting setup on the IQ Link Hub. You'll then see that when you run the wizard, basically it will highlight each fan in the case a different color. So they're all given a different color. This is handy because it will let you work out which fans in the system are on the all-in-one cooler in terms of the numbering. You might have to restart IQ in order to do this. But you can see we've got red, orange, blue, green, all sorts of different colors on there when you run the wizard and you'll find those highlighted on the case fans. And what we're going to do is be able to reposition the fans in IQ so you can basically set up your sequence of lights across the case. This is handy in two different ways. One, as I said, it will help you work out which fans are on the radiator, and two, it will help you set your case up so that any RGB effects you have will work across the fans in the right sequence. As you click on each fan, you'll see it lights up more brightly so you get an idea of which fan's which. You can then reposition them. What I'm doing here is I'm basically setting it up so one, two, three fans across the bottom, for example, start from left to right. So it goes yellow, pink, blue, and then the fourth fan will be the bottom intake fan on the right hand side and then goes up, basically works its way up across the top of the case through the radiator and out the top. Now, what I want to do here is to basically check and work out which fans are which. So you can see that five, seven, and six are the three fans on the radiator. And you can see that by the color and where it positioned them. So now I know which fans are where. And this will be handy because that means you can adjust the fan speed of those particular fans if you need to in IQ. So if you head over to the cooling section, obviously you can set the fans to whatever speed you want. And you can choose them individually, but perhaps you want to set 5, 6 and 7 to be on extreme mode, for example, because you want your coolant to be cooler when you're running a CPU. So you might choose to put those on extreme as an option. Unfortunately, in this setup, you can't particularly tell those fans to change temperature based on your CPU temperature. It's just not something you can do here. You could do it if it was an IQ Link cooler as well, but you can't in this instance. So that's the one difference we're going to have here versus running with the deep cool fans plugged into the CPU fan header. But you can adjust these fans individually still. You could set your own custom fan curve or you can just switch into the various different modes, maybe set them onto balance while having the rest of the fans set to quiet. So it is possible to customize the speed, but you just can't make it automatically respond, which is a bit of a shame. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to do. So you can set it up pretty easily to run like this. And my testing shows that temperatures are still really good as well in this setup. So it doesn't negatively impact the performance too much. And hopefully this has helped you if you're looking to do something similar. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Check out the links in the description to other related content, including a full guide on how to wire Corsair's IQ Link system if you need it. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.